Hello everyone, my name is Christian Niculescu and you know me for a lot of integration with UAPAD, the connector for Salesforce, ServiceNow, Jira, Confluence and so on. We have a lot of triggers. I have a lot of videos with uh, video, uh, videos for trigger the, pro, uh, the robots from different processes, from different softwares. Yeah, which I changed the, uh, the playlist now. And on the playlist, you have uh, the videos that are uh, using RoboGS, the videos with triggers, the raw REST API commands, because we have a lot of videos with raw REST API commands for for Jira's uh, ser uh, service now, Salesforce, uh, and so on. Uh, then uh, SMS, general presentation, configuration videos, the videos that I see that you like a lot, how to configure different software to work with your iPad. Use cases, the stuff from Postman, what we'll do today, power automate with your iPad, email with your iPad, and so on, and the rest of the playlist. Like I said, today we'll talk about Postman. And in this video, I will try to explain what are the steps to be able to start a process, which I, we did multiple times, but also to read the output of the process. Because to be able to read the out output of the process that um, was started from Postman or from other software, you need to wait on a loop and so on. Yeah. So let's understand the steps. So the steps, it's, they are very easy. You do get the authorization to go. I will work with, or, uh, with, uh, with uh, cloud. Yeah. I will work with uh, UiPad Cloud. For um, uh, system on-prem, you have the video dedicated here on Postman that it's working on-prem. Yeah, and you have the details here uh, here with uh, on-prem. And you have this website, which is postmenuipad.com rocks, where you find all the, um, uh, all the comments and very well descri described, yeah? Let's go back to the idea. Now, today we'll have this, so to be able to, get the value of the process that we started, we first authorize and get a token. Then <clears throat> first time we need to get the release key of that process. Yeah. So we'll provide the name of the process and we'll put a filter on the key of the process. And in this way, we'll extract the release key. It's only one time. So one time we get it separately and that's it. Yeah. Then we start the process with this uh, with this stuff and then we need to wait on a loop we need to stay on a loop and we need to see the status of the process after we start the process we'll, we'll get the idea of the process yeah and then we'll stay on a loop to see the status of the process and we will read the output because the output will be put there only when the status is done successful or failed and so on so we know that the process it's um, it's ended because you will see today on my process, I have a log. I have a delay to be able to, uh, to, uh, to wait, to stop the process. And then I have an output because I need an output argument. I will define on the process an output argument and I will assign a data to this output argument to be return data from process. Yeah. So my target is to read this data. Yeah. Let's say that I have a complex process and I need to know when the process is it's ended and how to read this data. Okay, so let's uh, go to the postman and let's see what uh, what we have in details. So first, we have this uh, command. The first command is to get the authorization token. So I have UiPath account, out, uh, out token. I put the headers to be, in my case, my tenant and content type should be application JSON. And uh, on the body, I need to provide the client ID, refresh token, and send the grand refresh token. All this information is found on this website. On the documentation of the orchestrator, you have the way how you write, you get the client ID and the, the refresh token. Yeah, you have it here. And also on my YouTube channel on the post menu, you have the video with how to start the process from with parameters. And here you have very well explained how you get this, uh, um, this data. Yeah. Good. So we'll not insist on this. Now let's go back to the, um, to the post. Menu. So I will send this command with this body, these headers. Yeah. And this, the system will return me an authorization token that will 
last for one hour because this is the way how it's configured by default you are able to configure your uh, your orchestrator to uh, to for how long the authorization token will last now you need to copy this for the next command the next command like i said it's you need only one time to to use it you will go here on the authorization you say that it's an auto auto authentication and on this auto authentication you will put copy paste here control a control v I put the authorization talk. Yeah. Now I want to get the release key of my process because when I start the process, I need to provide him the release key. Yeah. To be able to get the release key of my process, what I know, I know that on the, my orchestrator, when I publish the process, the process is called process delay on Christian Negulescu environment. Yeah. This is my process. So I will search for the proc delay. So I will search on the processes for this uh, for this name. So I will go on uh, this. You have uh, ten and ten and uh, auto uh, uh, all data releases, and on the releases I will say filter process key equal process delay. Yeah. And on the headers, I have again content application JSON and uh, XUA per tenant. Fantastic. In my case, in your case, you'll put your tenant. Yeah. So when I run this one, the system will give me the key, it will give me multiple information, but I need this key. Yeah. It's only first time. So this is the key of the process. Now, to be able to start the process, next step is this one. You need to send a command. To start the path server configuration or data start process. So this is the, the command. Yeah. So let's see it. I provide him the body with the start information, release key, and strategy. I will put all this uh, uh, all this code on uh, um, on my GitHub. Yeah. Remember on my GitHub where you have all, all the um, all the code that I do on the scripts, I will put also this code from, from the post. Yeah to be able to copy paste fast. So you have the content type, you have the um, uh, tenant, and I have copied already the authorization key. So when I run it, you will see that the process was started, yeah? And here on the orchestrator, you will see that the process is running. And this will take 10 seconds, yeah, to do the process. But now I need to check when the process is finished. Yeah. So to be able to check the process, we'll start it again and we'll see what's the idea. To be able to, 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 to check the process and know when the process is finished. And because only when the process is finished, I'm able to get the output parameters. Yeah. Let, let's see something. When I start the process here, I have, you see here, I have the output arguments, which is no, null. When I check the process, so to be able to check the job, the status of the job, I will get from here, from when I start the process, I will get the ID of the process. In my case, this is the ID of the process. I will go here and say on the params, I will say process UI path fantastic um, uh, ob, uh, jobs. And I will say filter, I want the status for this process. And when I hit send, you will see here that I have here the status, the state it's successful, yeah, and I have the output arguments. It's out argument, my argument. It's return data from the process. Remember my argument. My argument was this, yeah. So output argument return data from the process. Okay, here on the arguments. So that's my data. But on the start one, this was null. And this will be null in the time of the running. OK? So let's start it again. And let's be fast. You know that the process it take around 10, uh, 10 seconds, because I have here a delay of 10 seconds. OK? So I will start again the process. And I will go fast and take the ID. I will take the ID, and I will put the ID here on the filter. OK? Control V and I will send a message. And you'll see that the state of my process is running. 
And also, you can see that the output, output arguments are null. So first, we need to check this state of the, the process. So I will build a loop on my software that I create. And I will ask again, what is the, uh, I will send again the same command. And now I say that the status is successful, yeah? And here I see that the output argument it's org return data. So I need to parse the JSON and extract this data when it's finished. Okay, so this is the way how to wait because we learn in different movies how to start the process. But you need also to wait on the loop and check the status of the process. And then you are able to read the output and the, uh, the arguments that you return from the process, the result of the process, OK? So these are the steps. Another thing that I want to show you on the YouTube before we uh, we stop, it's um, uh, we change, I changed the, uh, uh, the, some videos. So you have here. Um, for example, on uh, on these videos, you have here a caption, yeah. So, for example, for configuration, for so all the video will be splitted on different uh, caption, yeah. So basically, you want to watch only how to read and send emails. You want to filter, so you want you just double click here. So remember, you go here. You can split it like this. You see it well, or you can click here on the YouTube. And uh, you have a list with the caption and you jump exactly on what you want from that video, if it's a long video. As usual, thank you very much for watching. And uh, remember to subscribe to my channel and ask me what else you want to see on my channel. Have a good one and stay safe. Bye bye.